будет не бить, да? Ну что? Я тебе нужна, Алка. Это меня нет, да? Нет, нет. Нет, что нет? Алка, Алка, Алка там. Алка was there. You are here now, Marina. You are in the United States. You, I am Lee Harvey. Okay, no, 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 Stone's JFK. The actress playing the wife of Lee Harvey Oswald is Beata Pozniak. Raised and educated in Poland, where she was featured in the record-breaking play How the Other Half Loves, she came to LA in 1988 to pursue a film career and other artistic endeavors, including a performance art group called Theater Discordia. She's appeared in over 20 films, both here and abroad, plus Mad About You, The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, and Melrose Place. She also works with women in film, promoting the recognition of International Women's Day. And she is our guest here tonight. I'm Thomas Quinn, and this is Entertainment Today. That was a terrifically spontaneous film. How were you prepared to do that scene with Oliver Stone? Well, uh, when I got the script, uh, basically there were two lines about my character. One was um, Marina and Lee uh, at a party, mm -hmm. ad lib. And the second line was Marina and Lee having a fight, ad lib. <laughs> so, uh, so you were basically the writer in this whole thing as well. So as it was the challenging. Actor. No, what, was, what happened was um, Oliver sent me to Dallas and I met with Marina. Actually, I stayed with her. Really? And, uh, which was a very interesting experience. And, but before actually I auditioned for the part, I went through the 26 volumes of Warren Commission. I read every single time, Newsweek magazine, anything that now, was, was this about on your own initiative or was uh, this absolutely no 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 Absol on my own yeah. on my own it's my responsibility uh -huh. to, since uh, she is still alive and sure. um, what what was she like what did you get from her what was the essence that you found in her that you could play well it was interesting because how many books you would read that's how many theories you would get yeah so I wanted to hear from the horse's mouth really what happened and uh, I wanted to seek for myself and that's why I asked uh, the production office to arrange that meeting for mm -hmm. me and first I learned it was very difficult because she's her own private person and but I insisted it's and I said it's imp uh, important to me as an actress yeah. um, and uh, so she said that she'll grant me just very simple like Q&A uh, an hour and that's it mm -hmm. So I prepared my questions, and uh, first when I met her, I was very nervous, and uh, when I met her, I looked into her eyes, and I, j I just said, Gavarish Paruski, and then she said, Da, oh, so that and that was the good eyes. eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, so anyway, but we just somehow clicked, and mm -hmm. then she said, well, would you like to come over? And I said, oh. Oh yeah, and so it was nice to get to know her as a mm -hmm. as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, yeah. and as a grandmother, and uh, and it was wonderful because we could talk about and recite Pushkin or Lermontov or you know just talk about gardening. So that was a nice challenge that I met with this real person and I stayed with her for two months. That's and amazing. she said even you know why don't you why do why do you have to be in a hotel why don't you stay with me. 
Was there agreement? Uh, did the two of you both agree in Oliver Stone's interpretation of events, or was that completely irrelevant to your discussion? Uh, what do you mean by it? In other his theories about mm -hmm. the Kennedy assassination mm -hmm. and so on, I mean, she certainly must have her own opinion of what really happened. Well, in the film, there was, of course, no, was not that much time about developing Marina's character and her contribution to the whole sure, thing and, sure. and how she was part of her husband's life. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a whole different uh, film, probably. Yeah. And, um, but... Um, Absolutely. Uh, during the whole process and meetings with Garrison and the witnesses right. and spending time in Dallas and looking at the real footage, the tapes and interviews of the journalists and it was pretty heavy process. You probably um, know more about the whole event than most Americans do at this point uh, because it sounds like you put a lot of study into it. Well, it was, it was interesting because uh, this was my debut here in this country, and I wanted to get away from politics in Poland. And, <laughs> and <laughs> ironically, in ironically, this is my first picture where yeah. I have to really study the history of this country. And and it was a nice little coincidence because just be, before a week before the film came out, I became an American citizen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had to also prepare. Welcome uh, to America. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and pass my exams, and sure. uh, so that was a very interesting process. The timing-wise, for well, me. Let me back up a little bit mm -hmm. then. Uh, you came you, from Poland mm -hmm. and moved to Los Angeles. So, as an artist, you had uh, you were found yourself in a situation where you worked for an oppressive totalitarian regime. Mm -hmm. um, but enough about Hollywood. Let's talk about Poland. <laughs> uh, what was it like working in a situation where the last word on what an artist could do and say was that of the state, that it was a, everything was seen through a political eye? Well, I think Poland is a, is a completely different planet. Uh, uh, of course, everything is run by the government, mm -hmm. but the power of theater was tremendous because we did not have our freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. So basically, just the way you have lines here to see baseball in America, that's you would have lines going to go to the theater. Um, Is there a strong underground movement in theater? Oh, where a lot of, okay, yeah, a lot of very political, that are not if symbolic. You know, you'd throw a sausage on stage or something. I mean, people just. <laughs> I mean, it's like very symbolic, and, uh, and that's people where, understand oh, the symbols. Absolutely, absolutely. It was uh, extremely powerful. That's where people would find their own nourishment and the truth. What was happening mm -hmm. in their own country? I and mean, it was a kind of a language where the, I mean, the government may not be catching mm -hmm. the message. Mm -hmm that the artists were of saying. Of course, that's why so often yeah. we would get our films put on, on shelves. When I came here, when I moved here to America, for the first time I would see my films. And like Vida's film, which I was mm -hmm. representing mm -hmm. here at the AFI Film Festival when I came over here, they asked me if I could represent it, but I went, but I haven't seen it. Yes, but Vida, he won can, he did. And I said, but that's Vida. And it was a very interesting experience for me to be here and see my films for the first time. How does it get to a situation where you can actually, you can make the film in Poland, mm -hmm. but you can't see the film in Poland? How, uh, why does that happen? I mean, why do they even Well, the films to... get approved. And for example, yeah. um, I'll give an example. There was a film I was in, it was called Hamlet. It's based on Shakespeare and Hamlet, but written by a Yugoslavian writer, Ivo Brashan. And this writer, uh, he was like on, on a list. I mean, he was censored. He was not allowed to be shown also in Yugoslavia mm -hmm. and in Europe. And we somehow managed to produce this show where I was playing Ophelia. But the way it was staged and against um, and showing the, the truth of our government. Mm -hmm. So basically, they saw themselves. In echoed, that situation. Echoed the political reality. So, and that was on shelves for many years. And just it looks like Hamlet, Ophelia, simple story. No, no, no. <laughs> it was much more than that. How does it feel when you finally get to see yourself in a theater full of people? That, you know, in a movie that, that mm -hmm. your own, your own co uh, countrymen couldn't see? Well, it feels great. It's, it's something that finally is appreciated. And I'm so happy with the, all the changes that right now are happening in Poland. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully for the better. I know. I read here that uh, at mm. one point you, during the uh, solidarity protest back in the 1980s, you had scrawled uh, solidarity uh, on the walls with your lipstick and all. How involved were you with that? Well, I happen to be from Gdańsk, which is the home of solidarity and and Lech Walesa. and Lech Walesa. Yeah. and uh, I live not far away from the shipyard. Mm -hmm. So yes, my mother every day she would make 
sausages and uh, I mean just food and I would go there through the bars I would just give them food and while they're on strikes and mm. so I was part of it and then when I was a student I was also part of the whole experience so well now you were talking about using theater as a political tool mm -hmm. which is something that's done a lot less in the United States and certainly with motion pictures it's done a lot less you very rarely see political films well, that was because of the necessity the sure. need we were like you know it was a feeling um, we were speechless I mean like being numb you felt in your own four walls at home like in prison I mean during the police I mean the the martial law and the martial law is imposed in Poland we basically, uh, the phones were cut off. Uh, mm -hmm. On television, there was just one channel run by the government for about for two hours. Uh, you're for uh, food coupons, you look through the window, you'll see tanks for miles. So how could you live? And the only subject you could talk about was food. Where could you get something? Where could you get some sugar? Where could you get some butter? Mm -hmm. And I knew that's the system. That's what it wanted to do with us. So I didn't want it um, to get into me. And during that time, many, many months of work, where everything was closed, the theaters, movies, I mean, everything was closed, libraries. I decided to do to just study in those months instead of just surviving in your own home. And that's where I, uh, for two, I did two years in one year. Um, that's when I wrote my thesis and after when the war was over, defended my thesis and got my master's degree. And I just thought, wow, if ever I want, want to have a, if ever I will have a family and children, I don't want it in this country. And that's when I, I decided as soon as the borders opened, I'm, I'll be gone. Okay, so you didn't slip out of the country. You waited until the borders opened. Oh, I had open no choice. Legally... I had no choice. Yeah. I had to wait till the borders open and uh, and just one way ticket. Do you think that maybe uh, in contrasting um, the dramatic situation there, mm -hmm. uh, the, the artistic uh, world over there, with something like Hollywood, where we have the political freedom, at the same time. It's not an entirely free system here. In, mm -hmm. you know, economics really dictates what we see in film here as opposed to politics there. Um, I, I, you probably think that it's better that economics uh, uh, controls it than politics, but are there some kind of frustrations that you see with American filmmaking in that, gee, you, you wish that America would be maybe a little bit more daring in what they say or what huh. they do? Well, I'm excited to be here. I I grew okay. up with this dream Maybe of I'm American <laughs> of American dream. You know, this is exciting. I mean, where would they have an opportunity like this? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so being in a, a film school in in Poland. I mean, we were getting films um, from America, from I other Western countries, and the the film would just come like for a couple of hours mm -hmm. uh, and go back. So basically, at crazy hours because of the time changes, right. we would see, let's say, ranging bull at two o'clock in the morning Lovely. Oh, <laughs> For, but these films would not well, so anyway but uh, that's how we um, that's how I was brought up I could see any film I wanted thanks to the school system yeah. and it was like international film school where many directors producers um, like Roman Polanski, Skolimowski, I mean many people graduate from that school and still are part of it mm -hmm. and I really I'm lucky to be um, to be much part of that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, any, of course, anybody making it mm -hmm. in Hollywood, I guess, is lucky, and, and you're doubly lucky having come from over there. Right. You, you, uh, your English is probably mm -hmm. better than mine, mm -hmm. but you do have an accent. Yeah. Does that open doors for you, or does that perhaps close a few doors for you in Hollywood? Well, it's interesting because um, that's a new thing for me. Um, one thing. You didn't have an accent in Poland for some strange reason, huh? Accent? <laughs> no, well. <laughs> well um, Yes, I do have an accent, and people don't know what kind of accent it is. It's not Polish, it's not Russian, it's yeah, not, it's I mean, what peg. is it? Yeah. So that is an advantage, in a way, because I, I played Italian, I played Swedish, I played uh, Russian, I played um, Norwegian, and I, I mean, just different nationalities. Anything exotic? <laughs> Anything exotic. I actually played American as well. Oh, okay. And, um, Can you do an American accent? Can you? I can't. I can't. No, Kidding. no, that's an English accent. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> <Big difference. laughs> but um, to answer your question, yes, it is a difficult, I mean, it is a, uh, it's like being in a minority, a woman and someone that is comes from a different country. People sure. always want to cast you as either so-called a bad guy a spy or a terrorist or right. Matahari or something <laughs> Matahari. Like that. so um, so that's why 
uh, so when, when, when I come to answer your question, it's, uh, I, I believe in non-traditional casting, and mm -hmm. I hope that one day... Uh, Boy, are you in the changed. wrong place? No, I don't think so. I no? think uh, I'm looking forward to a change, yeah. and I'd like to contribute to that. So yeah. I don't think it's in the wrong place. I think it's a good time and a good place. Is there a difference between the way directors work over there and over here? Or is it really personal, per no. individual? Well, um, the education and the, the working system, it is completely different. Um, How is it different? Well, for example, if I work on a theater play, I mean, we would put our heart and soul out. We would even sleep on the stage day and night, day and night, digging and wow. digging. And, I don't think the unions and, uh, would allow that here. Well, that's that we don't have unions and we don't have... That's true. The whole country is a it's, union. It's different. Yeah, so, yeah. And here the system is different. So mm -hmm. it's not that it's good or bad. It's just different. As I say, two different planets mm -hmm. uh, having a different way of communicating. Yeah. Now, you came over here and set up a, a performance art uh, group called mm -hmm. Theater Discordia. So you, it's not just the traditional acting you do. Give us a little bit about what that is about and the kind of work you do. Well, this is a finding a new voice for myself, uh, which I could not do in film or conventional traditional theater. Mm -hmm. And I form, formed a company named Discordia because I think the times we live in are so discordant. Mm -hmm. if, we, uh, if we introduce something from Baroque or, um, <laughs> or medieval times, I mean, anything goes now right. and nobody will be surprised. So that's what uh, the Discordia is about. And I put to get created a few shows here, uh, which were part of the Los Angeles Festival. Mm -hmm. And usually uh, the past shows were with people and poets that were born in other countries mm -hmm. that immigrated here and that could express themselves what it is to live in exile. So basically it's finding a new voice from the people, from different cultures. Um, people from uh, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Czechoslovakia, former Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, uh, Poland, Russia, Salvador, uh, Mexico. So basically you would learn about those different cultures and mm -hmm. who we really are. So it was not just um, a poetry event or uh, mm -hmm. some beautiful laser <laughs> visuals. It was something more for me. It's searching for new mm -hmm. identity. Is this an ongoing thing now? I mean, do you, yes, do you write new material yes, all the time? Yes, all the time. Yeah. I'm looking for new people and um, and uh, new voices. If you, do you have a phone number you want to give people who might be interested? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet? yet? Okay, uh, we're working on yes. that. We're working on the 900 number system. <laughs> right. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you had also done things like uh, Young Indiana Jones. Right. And uh, uh, what else? Uh, you had a, a cameo in Wild Well, Palms. it's great with Indiana Jones because uh, not very often you get w uh, roles written for powerful women. And this was a role uh, based on a true story. A woman that overthrown the Russian government in 1917 when Kerensky was in power. Right. That's just before Lenin became, uh, was in right. power. That was the brief flirtation that was, with exactly, democracy that, that they had Exactly, that was in July 1917, before the, the big one right. came in. So it was done with the monarchy and the Tsar. Right. It was just wonderful to be a leader and go to different factories and talk to thousands, millions of people and mm -hmm. tell them there's a different way of communicating, different way of living. And it was just wonderful to be a leader and have followers. In this and Indy would be, yes. <laughs> would be working for a different government. We would have different political views. But we were equal. We were partners. Mm -hmm. And rarely see that on screen. Very rarely. And, and is there a frustration in this so-called year of the woman, mm -hmm. uh, which has been uh, over uh, 1992, I think, yes. is dubbed that, and, and uh, ironically, because it seemed to be a bad year for women's parts in general. Uh, is there a frustration that you find in looking at the scripts uh, that you see uh, in Hollywood about the kind of roles that you get for women? Well, very often, yes, women are portrayed as ornaments or <laughs> like women have less uh, anything to say. They don't have last names a lot in the scripts, you know. They say attractive mm -hmm. 20s and right. they have a first name and that's it. I, I see that a lot. And well, I women's issues, I mean, if you look even at uh, like, I don't know, from 1950 to 1970, out of the 7,000 uh, films directed by women, uh, by, uh, I mean, generally, uh, out of 7,000, yes, only 17 were directed by women out of 7,000. Really? So that says something yes, it about does. Uh, 
as women. <laughs> now you also, uh, you're mm -hmm. not only an actress, but you also have done some directing, have you, in theater? Yes. I yeah. directed performance art and also classical theater, and um, and I'm excited about that new voice as well. Do you for have a, in, in mind possibly to do film directing at some time, point in the future? Is that at all an interest? I don't know. That's so wonderful about being here because um, when I was in Poland, I thought I'm going to be an actress to the end of my life. Mm -hmm. And when I came here, I just noticed all the opportunities and possibilities one can have. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I got offers to direct this project and people liked my vision, my, liked my new ideas. And that was a new surprise for me. And, um, and I don't know, there's this beautiful actually, poem written by Theodore Rothke called The Waking. He says, I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. I learn by going where I have to go. And something I, I can somehow relate to that because I don't know what will happen, but, but I learn by going what I'm going to do, what, where I'm going to go and just find my new self. You are a bit of a disciple mm -hmm. of Joseph Campbell and sort of the finding your bliss uh, school of Oh, absolutely. I, I want to follow my bliss and, and that's... Uh, and what a bliss it is, too. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, you are involved with an organization called Women in Film which uh, both uh, helps women uh, get uh, promotional, or um, I should say, support, employment. Support, support, support absolutely. And, and, uh, oppor right, support, I guess, is the most important mm -hmm. thing. And also employment opportunities in film and, and looking for, uh, for different chances. Mm -hmm. Specifically, you're involved in something called the International Women's Day. Well, what happened? Which is March 8th. Yes. And which most countries celebrate, apparently, but it's not really well known in the United States. Well, first, when I was in my theater groups, I... I said, why don't we create something on March 8th? And everybody looked at me, March 8th, what is that? What is that? And I said, it's International Women's Day. And that's when I learned that no one here, I mean, not many people know about this, this day. Mm -hmm. That was created in uh, 1913 in Copenhagen. Um, so <laughs> about 80 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was formed by Congress of Women. And this day was created to raise awareness what's been happening with women over the years. So basically that day, uh, you remind people that even 80, 90 years ago, women were not allowed to study. Women were not allowed to go to universities, or vote. be part of the unions or, or libraries, or vote, having mm -hmm. equal rights. The first country that gave women equal rights was New Zealand in, 19, in, in 1893. Wow. So exactly 100 years ago, that recent. Um, then uh, Russia, 1917. Mm -hmm. America, 1920. Um, uh, 44. Oh, and for example, 1971, uh, Switzerland, that recent. Yikes. So, so this yeah. is, I think, it's an important day to, um, to celebrate and remind uh, people about, about what's been happening. For example, even now, it's, this day is used politically. Uh, this year, for example, women in Norway send their bras to the government in a protest of having topless bars in Norway. Um, in Russia on March 8th, women <laughs> went on the streets with their pots and pans against the Elston, oh, saying, saying no more raising prices and all that. So, you know, women want to have a voice finally, want to be heard. And that's why yeah. I wrote to the mayor, I wrote to the government, and I wrote uh, to the governor, to the governor. Yeah. and I wrote to President Clinton. And I received um, a proclamation. So starting in 1992, for the first time officially, uh, it's been celebrated in Los Angeles, International Women's Day, and um, in California. And now President Clinton will be also announcing uh, that day for the first time in the United States. Is that, is that a, a sure thing now, or yes, is that something the, in the works? Well, in the works, but it's been said that it's going to happen. Boy, so because I've been working thanks to the support of Senator Dianne Feinstein and Congresswoman mm -hmm. Diane Watson. They've been very supportive of the whole event idea, and I'm very excited because I remember, I mean, as a little girl in Poland, we would get flowers and special design cards, just like you have Mother's Day. Um, you would have International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. And what was so exciting, you would get flowers from men just as a respect for the mother's children, a little girl. I mean, respect yeah, of yeah. a woman, who a woman is. 
Yeah. And it's so wonderful. It's just a sign of respect and a re little bit reminding of the tradition over the years, what's been happening. That's all. And, and it, it was nice at that time because as a little girl, for me, it was just about flowers and getting these little smiles from the boys. Yes, but but from, a, from, a, <laughs> from, a, from, from an education point of view, right. It has uh, a different meaning now because we have yeah. Secretary's Day, which is right. not quite the mm -hmm. same thing. Yeah. It's more of a token uh, acknowledgement right. of, uh, of a woman's role in mm -hmm. a lot of offices today that's often restricted to secretaries. Boy, talk about staying out of politics, huh? Mm -hmm. You came here and kind of <laughs> barn barnstormed it. Uh, it's amazing because I cannot. It's just uh, staying out of politics. I mean, just being a woman and having... Uh, Do you think it's also just a reaction mm -hmm. to having grown up in a regime where you didn't have the opportunity to have political influence and now it's, it's a little bit of a kid in a candy store. It's like you... you, you you appreciate a certain amount of freedom that maybe a lot of Americans kind of took for granted and mm -hmm. you're kind of running with it. Is there any of that? I mean, I don't want to wave flags here, but is there anything to that that um, when you experience freedom uh, later in life rather than from the beginning mm -hmm. that you kind of appreciate it more and want to exploit that more? Is there any of that? Well, it, it was hard in, in Poland. It's, it's, it's still hard because, no, I mean, I feel much better today. It's still, today. Hard, it, it's still hard. Yeah. I think it will take another at least two generations to appreciate the differences. And I think I grew up in a very hard times, which yeah. was not easy. Okay. And exchanging, let's say, food coupons for some books that I could read and educate myself. It's hard. It's hard to live in that system. And I'm just happy and sometimes overwhelmed with what I see. I just got back from the Skywalker Ranch from Lucas to um, experience my first July 4th. And mm -hmm. that was just such an exciting and overwhelming experience. And I just thought, what a country. <laughs> <laughs> to borrow a line. Well, listen, we got to wrap it up yes. here. Thank you very Thank much you. for being with us. Best of luck in all your future pursuits. Uh, Bieta Pojnak, uh, who can, uh, actress and uh, artist and activist. Uh -huh. uh, I'm Thomas Quinn with Entertainment Today, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Did we go over that?